Team seven. Imagine two students, both pretty similar in their day-to-day -day lives. They both go to high school, they both love basketball, and they both sit down for dinner every single night with their families. But after dinner, that's when their lives begin to change. That's when they begin to differ. Student one, he likes to hang out and study. He likes to get ready for the quiz the next day. Student two, he likes to go out with his friends, get into some trouble, mess around, do some guy stuff, do some girl stuff, whatever. After that, the second, the first student, after he's done studying, brushes teeth, puts himself to bed. The second student, he goes into a convenience store and takes some things that he didn't necessarily pay for. Now, imagine there's a way for us to curb that second student's like crime tendencies. Imagine there's a way for us to tap into their interests, to their desires, what they, what their passions are. And imagine there's a way to get both of these students together, spending more time together, sharing each other's like experiences with each other while still hanging out with their friends. Imagine Hoops for Hope. You just heard from Eric Hubner. I am uh, I'm Chris Keith, and Brownie Under Group, we have Daniel Saddleberger and Benny Young Hailu. Uh, today we'll be presenting to you our proposal, Hoops for Hope, who, and we hope to bring to your attention the growing problem of juvenile crime in the <coughs> Dallas region. Uh, just so, just as a solution to this growing issue, we hope to persuade you to support our proposal, Hoops for Hope. Then we have Daniel, who will hopefully bring to your attention uh, this quickly growing issue. All right, so we're chiefly uh, interested in juvenile crime, as Eric's story suggested. We also think our proposal will have other benefits in helping child health, child development, but juvenile crime is our chief issue. Here you can see Dallas area crime. Um, this chart breaks it down, uh, total crime and violent crime and property crime. This shows <coughs> the median crimes per thousand, uh, per thousand people. Dallas is, as you can see, Dallas is well above both the national and Texas median in crime rates. There have been some efforts so far to decrease time. There's been uh, some attempt to in institute a curfew, some community awareness programs, but we think more can be done. This also shows a year-to-year -year increase in crime. Dallas Mavericks were founded in 1980 by a group of local investors. Since they're purchased by their, their new ownership group, headed by Mark Cuban, the Dallas Mavericks Foundation has been founded. This will be the nonprofit that we'll be, uh, we'll be partnering with to complete this proposal. The Dallas Mavericks Foundation, since their foundation in 1960, have donated $3.5 million to not only uh, children in need of education, children in need of recreational opportunities in the form of basketball courts, but also to women uh, domestically abused or in need after, uh, uh, after unexpected pregnancy. Our proposal will go into three high crime, low income, and high uh, population areas in uh, <coughs> south and southwest Dallas, uh, particularly Oak Cliff and uh, uh, the Fair Park area will take three existing basketball courts and renovate them, uh, completely resurfacing them, installing lights and uh, spectator seating, and uh, making it a, a safe location for children and uh, young adults to have some type of uh, recreational opportunity and uh, a place where we can hold uh, games and have uh, have a late night recreational league for high school students. Um, um, midnight uh, Basketball uh, has this uh, project online, Late Night Basketball Leagues, and uh, this, uh, the second one is uh, Keeps Kids Off the Street at Night, and uh, the third one is Fights Idleness and Juvenile Crime. So, um, we thought this uh, 
programs will help the kids of the streets and engage them in a, a constructive activities that will help also uh, decrease the crime rate, also uh, uh, help them have some confidence in physically and mentally. So, uh, in uh, addition, uh, this midnight basketball team, um, um, program uh, holds this, uh, the, this copying from the, the positive sides of other programs already been uh, performed in other areas. For example, in uh, Kansas City, uh, in Fort Worth, in Milwaukee, uh, this statistic shows that it is a successful uh, program. So, uh, um, for example, in New Orleans model, uh, you would like to explain. Right, and one of the most effective uh, versions of this program has been in New, New Orleans. It's still currently going on. It's part of the NOLA for Life program that was started about three years ago by the mayor to in an attempt to deal with the city's famously high crime. And this is this is the specific program we're modeling ours on. It uh, involves 10 week seasons every year. The uh, teams of kids compete in tournament style games. There are uh, cash prizes for the winning team and runner up team. And it's not just a basketball program. It also makes a conscious effort to connect students or to connect program members with um, community role models, educational opportunities, employment opportunities. It, um, it, it brings them into contact with the sort of people that um, will help them be successful later in life. Um, and so that's that's another important part of our proposal. We don't just want to keep kids off the streets. We don't. It's not just a, you know, these are let's take these problem kids and put them somewhere so they don't cause trouble for a while. We'd like to um, introduce them to people who will help them uh, be successful later. Our main uh, points of. Uh uh, sorry, uh, we're going to be having three different leagues between each of the courts that we're going to be renovating. Uh, at each of these, we're going to have several teams that are going to have a champion of each league, of each court. And at the end of the, at the, end of the season, we're going to have a uh, citywide tournament at the end with uh, prizes and games like all throughout. Just a giant community event. Uh, we're going to be advertising this mainly at high schools and community centers aimed towards youth. Uh, we're going to be reaching out to coaches both in and outside of the MAVS organize, uh, organization. Uh, volunteers, obviously, we're volunteering, and for others, we're going to uh, be paying. Uh, we're going to be grabbing coaches, uh, players, so as visits, celebrity uh, visits uh, from the MAVS organization, and we're going to have uh, Rick Carlisle as the coach to come down and give a speech. Uh, which brings me to the next uh, budget. Uh, which comes down to we're going to be renovating uh, the courts, refurbishing them, which is going to come out to a total of around $24,000. Uh, the lighting is going to be $15,000 split in between all three of these uh, courts. Uh, for staff, staffing and whatnot, uh, we have coaches and referees. Each uh, we have allocated $1,000 for all throughout like the season, uh, and that's based off of just looking at uh, youth league and also YMCA um, job opportunities online, saying. $17 an hour, $13 an hour. Uh, we multiplied that by the amount of games slash the amount of time that we would assume that they would be playing and spending with these kids, given being their role model, uh, and we came out with this these numbers for a total of around $43,000. In conclusion, uh, I, I'd like to bring back to your attention just how quickly juvenile crime is rising in the Dallas area. This is something that, if something's not done, it, it, will, uh, it, it will come to a head. And I, I, I know personally, I, I wouldn't like to see some type of a, some type of news story with Dallas in the headlines with uh, national coverage, and I, I'm sure, uh, I, I'm sure nobody else would, also. And uh, again, bringing it back to our proposal, we'd like to go into three basketball courts already existing, resurface them, uh, 
put put in uh, put in new goals, put in spectator seating and lights, just so they're uh, they're well lit, they're safe areas to play, and there's a place that uh, community youth can gather, and uh, and just have a safe outlet at night, so they're not um, they're not going out and committing these crimes. And then we'd also like to have these uh, uh, this tournament system as we presented in the New Orleans model and also based on the 90s Midnight Basketball program. So we're asking the Dallas Regional Chamber for uh, $21.5,000, uh, a relatively small amount, so we can go out and accomplish this goal. Any questions? So um, you're saying that these kids are going to be playing late night games at, at, at these courts, but how, are you going to have security or anyone there to you know to stop them from getting too competitive or getting into fights or shootouts or something at the court itself? Uh, his question was uh, uh, paraphrasing. Uh, if we're going to have any type of security to prevent fights or um, or any any other type of altercations at the courts. Uh, this would be accomplished by the referees at the uh, uh, at, at each game. It, you do raise a good point that since these are uh, under underprivileged youth, there might be some type of extra aggression that would have otherwise been unexpected. But uh, steering away from actual security, we would just accomplish this through referees being uh, making sure they're they're physically capable of breaking up two people should aggression be present. I'd also point out that the New Orleans program has been remarkably successful in this regard. It's been operating for three years, and so far they haven't had a single violent incident between players. So. All right, so you all plan to do this an ongoing thing. So how do you plan to uh, earn the funds for this? Like, I know that Dallas Regional Chamber will give you the funds for a one-time payment. But paying the coaches and paying the uh, referees and all those, how do you all plan to do that? Uh, her question was, uh, how do we plan on continuing this operation if we're only asking for a one-time fee? Uh, the, uh, the main cost, the main like, bulk of how much we're asking for comes from the refurbishing of the court and the lighting, uh, which is the one-time fee of what we are asking for. Uh, other than that, it would only be around $4,000 each year if we were to, to try to continue this. So $4,000, sure, this seems like a lot of money, but as soon as people see how successful this is, we're going to be attracting a lot more donors. We're going to be attracting a lot more people to see the value of this program and <coughs> encourage them to donate. Thank you, Team 7.